We're on a mission to get those walls done. Oh, look at it, it has a leak out the side. It's dusty. Honey, it's not sticking to the wall. Welcome to our channel. If you're new, I'm Kathy and that's Rich and we are building an off-grid earth sheltered concrete dome here in the Adirondacks. And today we are on a mission to find a way to finish the interior walls of our concrete dome. When we first did the shot creek process and pulled off the foam, we discovered that the walls were not really nice enough to simply paint and that they would need a little bit more work. So today we're on a mission to find a way to finish the walls so that they look smooth and are pleasing to the eye. During the shot creep process, some concrete would squeeze through in some locations where the foam wasn't as tight as we would have liked it to have been. This mostly happened around the bottom of the dome and near the I-beams. Sometimes it's easy enough to chip off with a hammer and other times we need to chisel it away. Okay, so this one, because it's gonna be actually in the shower, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this whole cavity with concrete on both sides, nice and smooth. So I just chiseled it out a little bit so it's easier to fill with a um, putty knife. And along the floor, needs to be done because obvious reasons, we're gonna put some kind of flooring down. So, yeah, just the little things that we gotta take care of, detail work, you know? All right, some of the other detail work that we have to do is taking care of all these little pieces of wire sticking out everywhere to sort of get the walls ready so we can smooth them over. Another little thing that I have to do, I'm not going to record the whole thing, but everywhere there's a little nub of wire sticking out, I'm just sort of tapping over on it so it's nice and smooth and it doesn't catch the putty knife or your skin. I'm going to try this to sort of smooth out some of the spots that I don't like. It's like a little sandpaper flappy wheel. That works, kinda. All right, good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to try to mix up some mortar and start working on the walls. I'm really excited to try this. It's something I've wanted to experiment with. So today's the day. And not only is today the day, but today is also exactly 28 days since shotcrete. So we are done hosing down the dome. Yay! So the kit we purchased didn't really come with any specific instructions on how to finish the interior concrete walls of the dome. So we're going to do some experimenting, but our main goal is to get any little voids and cracks filled and to cover up the foam blocks that are still exposed. Those were from the shot creep process and there are areas where there's no concrete. So we wanna make sure we get those covered up. And then we're hoping to do a, a nice thin skim coat over the walls that'll give it like a sandy swirly look so that when we use waterproofing like you would in a basement, we can just paint right over that and we'll have that finish. So today we're going to try to do that with this rapid set mortar mix because this is what the Shock Creek guys used when they came to repair the interior of the dome. And I really kind of like the way that it looked. That is what yeah. I want yeah. on the, all the walls. I even want this brushed look. I have to work fast though because it sets up in 15 minutes. So I'm going to work in small batches and see how it turns out. I 
hope that's the right consistency. I really don't know. Oh, this feels pretty thick. We'll see. Maybe that's a little too sandy, muddy. All right, the guys were using their hands. I might have to do the same thing. Do that, sort of like Play-Doh. Oh, maybe I was supposed to wet the wool a little. Hang on. Pack it in. Let it set a little bit. You can't skim coat this stuff. No way. It won't stick. Nope, it won't even go on. Will not even stick. All right, well, this is not as easy as I was hoping it would be. And it's setting pretty quick. Well, definitely not as easy as I expected. It's very, very sandy. It makes it very hard to work with. I get why they were balling it up. It definitely does not want to stick to the little foam blocks in any way or form. So I have to rethink what to do about those foam blocks so that I can get the mortar mix to stick to them. It's rapid set mortar mix. So in an effort to use what I had before it was too late, I just came over to the bathroom and started packing it in to the beam because that was the uh, solution we came up with as to how to tile everything in here pretty good. I'm going to try to remove some of the foam so that I have a spot to put my concrete in and see if that works a little bit better. First try, it wasn't the end of the world. I did mix two buckets. Definitely need to remove the little styrofoam pieces so that the cement goes in the holes. That's definitely the only way. It doesn't want to stick to the smooth concrete. And I am not sure what the answer to that is. So I have to go do some research because we need it to stick if we're gonna finish these walls. It did, however, work really well in the I-beam. Filling the I-beam, that worked pretty great. I have a little mess to clean up, but that worked great there. So, yeah, I have to do some research. Filling the holes is one thing, but finding a way to skim coat the walls in some sort of a, 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 a light stucco-y finish, I'm gonna have to figure out how to make that stick. So, back to the drawing board. Not disappointed from my first try, because I think I did okay, especially filling that I-beam, but yeah. Definitely a learning curve, without a doubt. The mortar that I used the other day to try to do the walls just wasn't gonna work. But it does work to fill the I-beam. So I'm gonna fill the I-beam and I'm gonna fill some deep holes. We did buy something new called Quick Wall, and I'm gonna give that a try later on today too. We're on a mission to get those walls done. Alrighty, Richie's cleaning up. It took four more buckets to fill the rest of this beam. So this side is done with the rapid mortar set and this side is done. And now we just have to let that really dry. We did some spots on the wall, just because the quick wall stuff is a lot more expensive. So if there's any big holes, we're using the cheaper stuff to fill it. I even did a nice line inside all the bedroom beams. How you doing? This crap sticks to everything except the wall. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like to stick to the wall in a lot of spots, especially where there's like part of the plastic from the foam or the foam spots. It will not stick to any of that. So we're hoping the quick wall will stick. Apparently that's supposed to be better. Morning. It's another beautiful day on the homestead and we are going to try the walls again today. 
I tried the other day with the rapid set mortar and it really wasn't that successful. So we found a product called Quick Wall. It has some fiberglass particles in it and we're gonna give that a try today. There's Rich. He's Good gonna morning. <laughs> Richie is going to do some painting with dry lock. Is that what it is? Yeah, we're gonna try this stuff. <clears throat> with that. So we're trying to waterproof from the inside as much as we are from the outside. Like a basement. All right, so we're just about to finish the first coat of dry lock on the inside of our concrete dome walls. Now, nothing calls for us to do this. We're choosing to do this on our own because this house gets covered with dirt and we definitely get a lot of rain here. And despite the fact that we're waterproofing the outside of our house extra as well, you know, we get one chance. We and wanted to have a little waterproofer on the inside. Right. So we just, you know, want to do it. Redundancy is key. We believe in that. And that's what we're doing. So this wall that we're actually painting with the dry lock is the utility room wall. And we're going to actually be building a wall in front of this. So we really wanted to make sure this is sealed good. So what we did so far is we did a first coat. I went with a paintbrush and did all the edges really good on the inside of the steel beam. And Richie used the roller and we back brushed a little bit to fill pinholes and we kind of worked together to get this first coat done. We're gonna let it sit for a couple hours and hit it again. Yep, so we're just touching up a few places, making sure the pinholes are full. And because it's the utility room and the beams might show, we chose to paint the beams as well. Because why not? Down at the bottom where the foundation hits some wood or it's foundation to foundation, we really just kind of gobbed it in there. And we're gonna gob some more in there because, I don't know, more is better? We really don't know, but better safe than sorry. We want to do it one time and one time only. All right, there it is. Quick wool, quick creep surface bonding cement. I'm interested to try it. It's got little fiberglass particles and apparently I get 40 minutes before it hardens. It says to mix with one gallon of water. Yeah, we have one gallon here. Well, that looks a little light. Oh, look at it, it has a leak out the side. Can't win today. Well, that actually works good. Look, you can see the fibers. Yes, you can. Look at that. All right, water's going in. It's dusty. Oh my God. They said it's supposed to hang on a trowel, right? 90 degrees. This is the wall I am going to start with because it's kind of out of the way and it's a great place to practice and get my groove on. Hopefully by the time I get to this part of the bathroom and the bedroom, I'll have a good method going. Tried to use the rapid set mortar and it just wasn't doing a good job. So again, we just use that to fill the holes like a patch. Honey, it's not sticking to the wall. Why? All right, what you want to try and do is go up. Yeah, that way. I wonder if I could give it a try? Yes, please. What you want to do is this. I feel like it's too... Thick. Too thick. Yep. Oh, crap. It is too thick. It needs more water. 
give it a spritz with the sprayer. There you go. Yeah, it was too thick. We got to get that consistency right. I'm going to go add water and mix this up a little bit more out here so we get a little bit more watery consistency. We made it too thick still. Oh, wow, it's already setting. The one good thing is this said that you could add water as needed. All right. I like a little swirl to it. Wow, it really does look beautiful. Wow. And if it dries that color, it's not, a bad color. it's not bad. I can live with that for quite a while. I am so happy with it. Let's get yeah. a little bit of a close up over here. We took the sponge and we kind of did a swirl. I don't know if you could see it. Point the camera down. It is a messy process. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a mess. It's a messy, time-consuming process. Oh, there's a big goober there. Yeah, we need some help. We got to clean up quick. But for two people who never, ever did stucco or any kind of plaster work, other than just what we would patchwork for uh, sheetrock, that's all we've really done, right? Yeah. I think we did good. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll be pros by the time this is over. We fun. sure will. Working on bag number two. And I'm going to hit it on. Richie, you're amazing. You got that sprayer fixed. I know. I could fix anything if I just throw enough time and money at it. You didn't throw any money at it. You I know. <laughs> and you took ours and you put them together. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty good and wet. Okay, I'm going to do here. And I'm going to go there. Go there. And we'll meet in the middle. Sounds good. That is before sponging. And there it is finished. So we ended up using approximately three bags of quick wall to finish that section of the wall. We got all the way to the bedroom. So the master closet, the bathroom, and a little tiny bit of the bedroom is done. It covers everything amazingly. So a wall that looked like this before prepping in quick wall looks beautiful when it's finished. And if you remember, we had that big chunk of rebar that stuck out in our master bedroom closet you can't even see it anymore. So quick wall is the answer. Comes in 50 pound bags. You get 40 minutes to work with it. It's easy to apply if you get the consistency right. It sticks to the concrete walls with no problem. It covers up the foam blocks so we don't have to dig them out. One coat application provides both structural strength and a textured finish. You can finish that texture in a lot of different ways. We prefer the sponge with the little swirl. It also damp proofs the walls and no additional waterproofing is necessary. So we'll only use the dry lock in areas where we don't use the quick wall surface bonding cement. So between the dry lock and the quick wall surface bonding cement, we'll get the entire interior of the dome damp slash waterproofed and we'll be good to go. It is going to take us a while to finish. We'll do a little bit at a time. It'll be a labor of love, but it will look amazing when we're done. Thanks so much for joining us. Let us know what you think in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video. Oh no, we sprung a leak. Can we wrap it with that red tape? This is five minute epoxy putty, Loctite mold it all around the handle and then I'm going to cap it with some red tape. Right around the whole entire handle. Red tape fixes everything. Mm. I could live with that. That works. You did it. It works. <laughs>